My name is Pamela Koulianos, and I am presenting a paper. Although there were likely multiple centers of perfume manufacture th throughout the empire, the perfume industry in the Nabataean Kingdom, and at Petra in particular, is notable due to its prominence in ancient literature regarding the trade of aromatics. The Nabataean perfume industry appeared in the late 1st century BC and flourished through the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. It declined and apparently disappeared in the mid-third century. The demand for and the capability to provide perfume and the recognizable ceramic unguentaria in which it was sold were available to the producers and merchants in late antiquity at Petra, yet here, once a major nexus of trade, the bottling of perfume and ceramic unguentaria disappeared by the third century. This paper will explore why the perfume industry declined so rapidly at Petra. Evidence from Egypt and other Levantine sites suggests that the bottling of unguents continued elsewhere and was shipped in different containers, i.e. glass unguentaria. The cessation of unguentaria production at Petra suggests the death of this industry in the third century, but it is clear that the market for perfumed oils had not disappeared. The decline of the Petra industry was likely due to the multiple causes stemming from the crisis of the third century. This period was characterized by plague, rampant inflation, political instability, and incessant warfare. In the Roman Levant, this included major invasions of Syria by the Persians in the 250s and the Palmyrene Rebellion and occupation of the region around 270. With all this turmoil, the demand for luxury items such as perfumed oils likely declined sharply. Although Petra became a smaller city, it experienced a revitalization of trade in the fourth century, as suggested by Petra's continued export of pottery at sites as far south as Isla, Ein Garandel, and Humeima. Pottery from Petra is also attested throughout the Negev in this period. Furthermore, even though Petra could still access the key ingredients for perfumes, it no longer produced ceramic unguentaria. Petra, regardless of its still successful ceramic industry, was perhaps now simply a consumer of imported products rather than a major international nexus of trade. Glass and ceramic unguentaria were used contemporaneously. However, there is an apparent shift to exclusive use of glass after the mid-third century. Glass unguentaria from the 1st through 4th centuries will be examined from various sites within Egypt and the Levant. Table 1 provides a comparison of the dates of glass unguentaria organized by the sites that will be discussed later. Due to the lack of published data, it was impossible to quantify glass unguentaria by morphology. Karanis, modern Kum Ashum, lies in the northeast corner of the Fayum Oasis. Karanis was an agricultural town in Greco-Roman Egypt, established under the reign of Ptolemy II Philadelphus and excavated by Francis Kelsey of the University of Michigan. Donald Hardin published a typology of this glass in 1936. Hardin describes seven types A through G of toilet bottles, or unguentarium. Types B, C, D, and H are relatively early, from the first century to the late second slash early third century AD. Types F and G are intermediate types from the late second to mid third century AD. Type A dates from the 2nd through 4th centuries, and finally type E is chiefly, if not entirely late, probably late 3rd slash 4th through 5th centuries AD. Displayed on the screen are examples of types A, E, and F, all of which date to the 3rd century or later. Barbara Johnson published 11 ceramic unguentaria and 2 piriform unguentaria from Karanis. Johnson dates a majority of the fusiform unguentaria to the second half of the 2nd to early 3rd centuries. She dates two examples to post-Ptolemaic and a circa mid-3rd century. The two piriform unguentaria, specifically number 267, which looks most like the typical Nabataean piriform unguentarium, dates to the early 3rd century. Although she provides no evidence for dating these vessels, but assuming her dates are correct, then the latest ceramic unguentaria are early to mid third century, despite the fact that much late, that much late third, fourth, and fifth century ceramic material is published in the same volume. This suggests that by the th mid third century, glass containers replaced the use of ceramic for such unguents. 
Alexandria was a major industrial center that was famous for its manufacture of glassware and perfumed oils. The Polish excavations at Alexandria in the 1970s publish a significant amount of ceramic material, but no ceramic unguentaria. However, the single published plate of various glasswares included three possible glass unguentaria. Recovered from a latrine pit and described as, quote, light blue flasks and bottles. Lacking specific evidence for their dating, I assume that these glass vessels may be dated to the latest associated pottery of the 5th through 7th centuries. No ceramic unguentaria appeared in these contexts, perhaps because glass unguentaria had replaced that of ceramic by this period. Excavations at Corinth yielded significant quantities of glass, published by Gladys Davidson, along with small finds from the Agora. The Roman period yielded the first evidence of large-scale importation, especially glass. She refers to unguentaria as toilet bottles as well, of the eight vessels identified as toilet bottles, four date possibly later than the third century. For number 668, Davidson refer references Hardin's number 835, dated to the third to fourth centuries. Number 671 also references Hardin's number 835, third to fourth centuries. Number 673 is dated by Davidson to the first century, however, she notes that there is a late version of this type that dates to the fourth century. Finally, number 674, although dated by Davidson to the, late, to the second century, is dated to the third slash fourth century by Caparanda. Dating of these toilet bottles is problematic because Davidson provides different and earlier dates than given by Hardin. Despite this discrepancy, there are glass unguentaria that date after the mid-3rd century. Excavations of the Sanctuary of Demeter and Corre at Corinth yielded a few ceramic unguentaria. Number 142 is the only one published from the destruction debris of the late 1st century AD. Slane reports that, quote, fragments of no fewer than two and no more than nine clay examples were found. Slane suggests that the paucity of ceramic unguentaria in both the Greek and Roman periods of the sanctuary might be explained by the fact that glass unguentaria are coming into common use in Corinth at the end of the third quarter or during the fourth quarter of the first century AD, and some examples are known from the sanctuary. It is therefore possible that the relative lack of Roman clay unguentaria in the sanctuary is due to the fact that they only appear in years immediately before they were replaced by glass. Corinth then may have experienced this transition from ceramic to glass containers much earlier than the other sites reviewed today. Excavation of Jalame on the coast of, the Palest of Palestine near Mount Carmel revealed a glass factory which excavators dated from the mid to late 4th century. Jody Magnus and Kathleen Slane have now pushed the terminus of occupation of the site to the 5th and 6th centuries based on associated late Roman redwares. Not surprising is the complete absence of ceramic unguentaria among the published pottery. Yet, various cosmetic glasses, flasks, were found, but were, quote, not in the factory's repertory. Several small glass flasks date to the first century AD and onwards. Additionally, one, one vessel, number 324, in particular, was recovered from a pre-mid-fourth century context. It is unclear how early this context should be dated, However, these vessels were in use and thus would be clear examples of small glass unguentaria during the mid-3rd century. Vessel number 340, described as a lentinoid flask, dates as early as the 1st or 2nd century, however others date to the 3rd or 4th century. The most significant find is vessel number 327, a spindle or pipette-shaped flask common in the 4th century in the east and the west. The contents may have been a medicinal liquid of a measured quantity, likely from Syria. Although this form is found in Egypt, it was not attested at Quranis. Because no ceramic unguentaria were published at this site, and all unguentaria were glass, this again suggests that glass unguentaria had replaced the use of ceramic by this period. Before turning to centers of glass manufacture, I must note an apparent exception to this trend a 6th century ceramic fusiform unguentarium from the excavations of El Catute in Petra. 
Other published ceramics recovered, primarily late Roman redwares and lamps, clearly date to this period. It is surprising that these, quote, fusiform unguentaria have not appeared in previous excavations of the city center. Perhaps these 6th century unguentaria were not common, such as the Nabataean piriform unguentarium. The monuments south of the colonnaded street lay in ruins by this period, which may account for their absence at structures such as the Pool and Garden, the Great Temple, Qasr al-Bint, and Azantur. Perhaps then, we must consider the churches that dot the North Ridge. Unfortunately, the pottery published from the Petra Church was largely limited to that recovered from under the foundations, and ceramics from the Ridge Church and the Blue Chapel remains largely unpublished. Notably, Slain has published similar vessels from Corinth excavated in a large pit in the Peribolos of Apollo. It is the first deposit of the late 3rd and early 4th centuries identified at the site. The pit appears to have been a dump dug into Roman levels of the Peribolos. Two bronze coins of Diocletian indicate a date no later than AD 292 for the dumping of the debris. Slain published no ceramic piriform unguentaria nor glass unguentaria in this article. However, she refers to ceramic vessels 61 and 62 as, quote, roughly made unguentarium. Described as having sandy red fabric with very abundant fine to tiny clear and sand sized black inclusions and sparse angular mineral, mineral rock grains. Could these roughly made unguentaria derive from Petra? If so, Although Slane's unguentaria are dated to the late 3rd and early 4th century rather than the 6th century, are these the ceramic continuation of Nabataean, Nabataean piriform unguentaria? Now, what of the possible centers of manufacture of glass unguentaria? Jalame, discussed earlier, is the only Levantine site that has been established by excavation as a glass production center. However, limited archaeological evidence suggests glass production at Petra. The Petra Church on the North Ridge was erected in the late 5th century. During the later, quote, non-ecclesiastical occupation, the early 7th century, of the structure, Room 9 was interpreted as a glass collection and processing center. A significant find from this room was a group of glass paste cakes, usually considered to be products of glass remelting process. A total of 50 cakes or fragments were found. Cakes of colored glass were apparently intended for the production of wall mosaic tesserae, since a few cakes with straight surfaces suggest that they had been cut. The cakes were associated with late 6th to early 7th century ceramics. The excavators interpreted this room as a storage area for recycling glass, perhaps to be used for the manufacture of new glass objects, including the mosaics, for use somewhere else in Petra or in the region. These glass cakes suggest a furnace within the city center, either in or close by the church complex, to melt down recycled glass into cakes. The excavators state that the manufacture of raw products using secondary material has significance in relation to the late history of Petra. Another site within Petra offers further evidence for local glass production. The hilltop domestic complex, as on tour, above the garden and pool complex, yielded a stratigraphic sequence from the late 2nd century BC to the early 5th century. Daniel Keller provides an impressive and detailed analysis of the glass from Ezantur. He identified an indigenous glass region covering Petra and the surrounding areas of the Negev and southern Jordan. The glass vessels from northern Jordan, Judea, and Galilee are, quote, typologically or technologically different. During the Nabataean period, imported glass vessels are attested in small numbers, which provides evidence for personal souvenirs or gift exchange of Nabataean merchants, rather th than for an organized large-scale trade in glass. The typical Roman use of small glass flasks or vials to store liquids and spices began in the 4th century and continued into the 5th century, regarding Petra at least. Furthermore, Keller describes the replacement of fineware drinking vessels with glass beakers over the course of the 4th through 5th centuries AD at Ezantur, further illustrating the increased use of glass in the late Roman period. 
Keller goes so far as to state that this transition alone strongly indicates local production of glass in the late Roman and Byzantine Petra, even without direct evidence of a workshop. Interestingly, Keller mentions that because of the decline of imported raw glass, locals would have recycled broken glass, cutlet, cullet, for reuse as raw material. This assertion can be linked with the glass activity in the Petra church. However, I must emphasize that no glass unguentaria have appeared at Petra apart from janiform glass bottles, one of which I have personally seen from the Petra garden and pool complex. Having already considered glass manufacture in the Levant, we now turn to glass production sites within Egypt and more specifically at Alexandria. Wadi El Natrun was a main center of the Roman glass industry in Egypt. Both key glass making ingredients, silica and natron, were abundant in the area. Published reports from Wadi El Natrun focuses on technical information about the glass making process, but not glass forms or glass waste. However, there are two types of crucibles at the site for fritting and for melting. The crucible for fritting had a rectangular form, probably intended to facilitate the transport of glass frit blocks to glass factories in different places where raw materials were not available. Once the glass was shipped into these large rectangular blocks, they would have been shipped out to glass factories to be melted down and either molded or blown into vessels. Once glass blocks had reached the secondary manufacturer centers, such as those at Jalame and Alexandria, the blocks would have been smashed and then remelted to be blown or molded into a particular vessel. Pliny discusses Alexandria's production of perfumed oils. It is unclear whether Alexandria produced ceramic unguentaria, but it is likely given its involvement in the perfume industry when Petra was producing ceramic unguentaria. However, on display at the Field Museum in Chicago is a small, quote, late Ptolemaic slash Roman period juglet of chocolate brown color covered in white slip. It shares a similar profile to the Nabataean piriform ceramic unguentarium. Perhaps this vessel represents an Egyptian or Alexandrian piriform unguentarium. This example has no provenience, yet if it is indeed an Egyptian piriform unguentarium, then perhaps ceramic unguentaria were distributed prior to glass unguentaria in Egypt as well. Because no ceramic unguentaria are as of yet published from Alexandria, we can assume that glass replaced ceramic containers, but the date will remain uncertain until such ceramic unguentaria are published. Polish excavations identified a glass furnace at Alexandria. The published volumes discuss three main categories of glass finds, one of which is, quote, dismantled glass, or glass slag slash waste. Remains of a kiln were found in a domestic complex, in particular House B, with associated pottery from the 5th to early 7th centuries. This is compelling evidence for glass unguentaria production in the 5th through 7th centuries. Evidence suggests two flourishing glass factories in medieval Corinth, and suggests that necessary materials were locally available. Although there is, uh, is yet no earlier evidence for glass manufacture at Corinth, this remains possible. After the mid-third century crisis, ceramic unguentaria, including Nabataean piriform unguentaria, disappear from the archaeological record. It seems that with the revitalization of the economy in the fourth century, the perfume industry continued exclusively in glass containers. The perfume industry continued elsewhere, most likely at Alexandria, the most viable alternative source for the production of unguentaria, along with other glass manufacture centers such as Jalame and possible centers such as Corinth and Petra, the latter based largely on circumstantial evidence. This suggests the likelihood of multiple centers of glass manufacture, several of which, have, which may have produced and exported glass unguentaria. In conclusion, the perfume industry, which, once, which had once relied on both ceramic and glass containers, clearly shifted exclusively to glass after the mid-third century. These glass and guantaria seem to have been manufactured at commercial and industrial entrepôts such as Alexandria. The evidence indicates importation of raw materials to manufacture perfumed oils and glass containers. Finally, it is evident that the Mediterranean perfume industry continued through late antiquity into the Islamic period. 
Although no glass sanguinaria wasters have been recovered at any of the sites discussed today, particularly Petra, to suggest a workshop dedicated to producing these vessels in either its ceramic or glass forms, it can safely be assumed that centers of glass manufacture were producing unguentaria along with other luxury and utilitarian items. Thank you.